Brown with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. Today I've got another little slideshow video for you guys today. You guys know I love my top five, top ten. Today I've got a top 15 list. So I'm going to rank the 15 best duos in the Western Conference in the NBA as of today. I'm not talking about potential. I'm not talking about resume or what they have accomplished. I'm talking about right now playing together the best duo. So this is not going to match up perfectly with the best teams. I don't care what the, the Jazz are 3-0. I'm just talking about my best duos in the Western Conference. It's also not bigs and littles. It's just the two best players on each of the 15 teams in the West ranked in order of who I think uh, is the best pairing uh, as of today in the NBA. So without any delay, let me get you cranking. I've got you a little slideshow pulled up and there you go the best western conference duos and here they are 15 through one this video is not going to be too long i could talk about this forever you guys know how i do things but let's get rolling with number 15. number 15 on our list not surprising i don't know if anybody will argue with me about this i guess there is one potential uh argument but i've got Kelvin johnson with devin vassell and this duo is so bad that it could have been jacob Pertle, it could have been trey jones it could have been Joshua Primo. It was just hard to pick two because, I mean, I guess Kelton Johnson's clearly the alpha there, but after Kelton Johnson, all of those other guys are just right now at least. I know Primo has some potential. Uh, Trey Jones looks like he could be a starting point guard in the NBA, possibly. I don't know. Uh, he's either the next Mike Conley or he's the next Facundo Campazzo. He's probably just a rotation guy. I don't see it with Vassell, so I'm not going to take much more time. I've got the Spurs ranked 15th. I could have put Pirtle in here. Pirtle's a better fantasy player than both these guys, probably because of his blocks. But as far as actual on-court NBA performance, whatever. Throw Pirtle in here. It wouldn't change the result. Spurs would still be my number 15 team. So Spurs are number 15 in the West for me. Number 14 in the West, I've got the Jazz. And I could have had the Jazz last but for Larry Markkinen. I've always been a fan of Larry Markkinen. I know he uh, he had a really rough stretch there in Chicago when he fell out of favor with, uh, with the coach and coaching staff and the way they played. He uh, found new life in Cleveland playing the uh, small forward and the wing position. Uh, I've got a couple of cards. I forgot to talk about the Spurs cards, but there wasn't much to talk about. But we've got Lloyd Markinen's PSA 10 silver pulled up, and then the base Jordan Clarkson Prism rookie card here, both in PSA 10. Uh, I could have chosen Colin Sexton here probably as my secondary player. I think Larry Markinen is clearly the alpha on that team this year. And then I think after that, you know, it's you know dealer's choice whether it's Sexton or Jordan Clarkson. Again, uh, I've got him second, and the Jazz are off to a three and zero start, much to the chagrin of. Danny Ainge, who is trying to win the Victor Wimbanyama sweepstakes, but uh, whether you put Sexton or Clarkson as the as the beta to the Alpha Markinen, uh, that's still a clear cut 14 for me. So I've got the Jazz at number 14. Next on our list at number 13, we've got. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green. You guys know this was tough for me, right? Because I'm so subjective and I like Kevin Porter Jr. so much, but that's primarily from a potential standpoint. He has gotten off to a pretty good start this year, despite the fact that the Rockets have not. But uh, I've got KPJ and Jalen Green at 13 on my list. Honestly, if we did this list four years from now, they would probably be a lot closer to the top, assuming the Rockets can keep this backcourt together. Um, I guess you could have argued that Jabari Smith belonged in here instead of one of these guys. Sort of Alperin Shingoon, but he's not even starting. Uh, certainly not Eric Gordon. Certainly not Josh Christopher yet. Uh, no Jay Sean Tate. So this is it, right? It's the one and the two in the backcourt. They do just sort of take turns, and that's kind of the way they're playing right now. They're a fun team to watch on League Pass. I like the upside of these two guys, but as of right now, they're better than 14 and 15, and I don't think it's close as far as the Jazz and the Spurs go, but uh, I can't put them any higher than 13, and uh, you'll see why when we get to number 12 on our list, which is the Oklahoma City Thunder. And so when I put this list together, I was thinking to myself, gosh, Giddy and SGA is a really good not just a good backcourt, but a really good duo. I thought they would be a little bit higher in the West. And then I started looking closer at these duos in the West, and there's just some really nasty pairings, man. Um, I was actually talking about this. I had a, a hobby lunch today with two local collectors, and we were talking to the waiter, who was a huge basketball fan, and he was just kind of asking, he's like, did you not think that the NBA is deeper than it's ever been as far as the talent pool? And I was just nodding my head, yeah, man. I was like, yeah, Mr. Waiter, I do. And uh, this is just a perfect exa 
example of that because these two guys are fantastic uh, players already with great upside potential. I don't think they're a good fit together because neither one of them as of right now can shoot to save their life. Uh, will Giddy develop into a shooter? Will SGA develop into a better you know, perimeter shooter? I don't know. Um, but right now, I've got these guys at number 12 on my list. It was sort of a tough comparison with uh, 12 and the team you're about to see next. I don't think there's anybody else on the Thunder that you would even consider in this conversation. It might have been SGA and Chet Holmgren. Uh, but again, you know, Chet's not playing. So I've got Giddy and I've got SGA here at number uh, number. 12 on our list with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Number 11 on our list. Uh, I'm a big De'Aaron Fox fan. Uh, you can see his 2017 Crown Royale Pacific Marquee. Pop 2 in PSA 10 condition. Really cool looking card for a few hundred bucks. Uh, and then you've got the flagship silver prism Demonis Sabonis PSA 10 holding up the OKC number 1 jersey because he was their first round draft pick. Uh, this is a nice big little combination, right? So you've got your, your true five man in Sabonis and you've got your true point guard in De'Aaron Fox who the Kings decided to max out and give a full max contract to. Keegan Murray's not quite there yet. Harrison Barnes is, looks horrible this year and he's over the hill. So this is the clear cut alpha and beta for that team. One day Keegan Murray may develop into one of those roles, but as of right now, he's a rookie who's in his second or third game in the NBA. So this is my next pairing on the list. Um, which just gives you an idea of just how deep it is because both these guys are borderline all-stars. They are. There was a year where Fox should have made an all-star team. There was a year where Sabonis either should have or may have even snuck onto an all-star team uh, when, back when he was in Indiana. I can't recall. I'd have to double-check that on basketball reference, but that's a pretty good pairing right there. The problem with the Kings is what else is on that team. Uh, they just have not been able to put the pieces together. They've made some real poor choices uh, with their draft picks, and so that's why they fall to number 11. We're already at the top 10, so in the top two-thirds of the West, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate from my, from my guys, right? So I'm a big Lillard collector. I've got a, a bunch of really, really good, intelligent, awesome basketball educated uh, Portland Trailblazer fans in my hobby circles now and they're going to hate it if they see this. Hopefully they don't watch this video. I've got Damian Lillard and his 2013 Select PSA 10 pulled up on your screen as well as the Nurkic 2014 Silver Prism PSA 10 rookie card. Uh, I could have put Anthony Simons in here instead of Nurkic. I think it's probably too soon this year to really confirm that Anthony Simons is the beta to Lillard's alpha. Lillard's clearly the alpha. He's come back and posted 240 uh, plus point games out of his first three games back. You know, the first game he looked a little rusty, and honest to God, he looked a little bit slow to me uh, and a little heavy footed. And then in games two and three, it clicked, brother, and he looks like the good old fashioned Dame time that we've all come to know and love, and the reason that I collect his cards. Uh, I've got Nurkic as the two in front of Simons. Uh, again, let's see how the season plays out. I think Simons, after hitting that big, you know, sky hook, he hasn't shot the ball real great so far in three games, but the Blazers are three. And, o, and Simons is a big part of that as well. But I've got Lillard and Nurkic uh, on my list at this point. And uh, we'll move on to number nine. So who's just in front of Dame Time and Nurkic? Uh, and this is tough, right? Because you could put Lillard and Nurkic ahead of Morant and Bain. And then I could have put JJJ in here. Again, he's hurt, but uh, he's not you know, out for the season or anything like that. So whether you put Desmond Bain as the two or JJJ as the two, I think right now uh, the fact that John Morant is so electric and so dominant uh, that I've got to have them in front of Lillard and Nurkic. Um, you know, Bain is probably a wash with Nurkic because he's such an efficient two guard. Uh, and then Morant, I give just a slight edge just from youth, just from the youth aspect and just from being smack dab square in his prime. Uh, I've got Jaws, what was a, once a very, very popular 2019 Panini Chronicles card uh, with that famous missed dunk over Kevin Love. I wish they'd have put that photo on a little bit more relevant lower pop card, but but unfortunately, it's on this card. Could you imagine if that was his prism uh, rookie card? Wouldn't that be something? Uh, and then I've got, the, uh, of course, the silver Desmond Bain PSA 10 over there to the right. Uh, this is an argument that could be I could go back the other way, especially since I'm so preferential to Des um, Damian Lillard and Simons. You could convince me to flip-flop those two. Uh, but I did put Morant and Bain right here, and I could have been JJJ in there as well. Top eight. Okay, and this is where people, I'm going to lose some people because they're going to be like, are you nuts? This is like a top two or top three duo. And I tell you what, you know, on paper, it might have been two years ago. And if they were perfectly healthy, it might be. 
but I've seen enough of Kawhi Leonard this year to know something ain't right with this guy. Uh, and I'm not just talking about his wacko brain. I'm talking about his body. He's already sat out one part. Uh, he already sat out game two, I believe. He doesn't look good. He's coming off the bench. Apparently, he's got some kind of degenerative knee condition. He has not looked himself. I still think he's a clear cut. Uh, really, it should be backwards. I should have Paul George as the alpha and Kawhi Leonard as the beta because Paul George does look good and does look healthy. Um, and, you know, like I said, in theory, these guys are a really nasty one two punch. They're both two way wing players. They're both three level scorers, meaning at the rim, at the mid range, and from the three point line. They check every single box as elite defenders or former elite defenders. Um, but I just don't see it right now from Kawhi Leonard. We're not seeing the Kawhi Leonard that a lot of people thought we were going to see this year after all that time off. I've got Kawhi's Aurora PSA 10 pulled up here, which I think is a beautiful, beautiful offering from the Court Kings product. And then uh, I've got a very boring 2013 Prestige Paul George PSA 10. Paul George doesn't have the sexiest cards out there. Uh, so that's one that I'm going to get some hate on, I'm sure. So comment below if you think I'm nuts putting Paul George and Kawhi Leonard eighth. Uh, but if you look at these teams that are in the top seven, I mean, look, a lot of these teams have a lot more going for them, and, and they don't have a lot of the injury question marks. So here's one where I had to make a choice between Chris Paul and Aiton. Last year, I would have said it was clear-cut Chris Paul. Uh, Aiton signed the big contract. Aiton's healthier. Chris Paul hasn't looked really great this season, to be quite honest with you. Part of that is he's probably going to just kind of jog and, uh, you know, kind of pay himself through the regular season he's been there done that and he knows they're going to be you know somewhere in the top six I would think in the Western Conference I've got Devin Booker's uh, 2015 Panini Select Courtside Silver PSA 10 pulled up, which is a crazy low card, crazy low pop card. And then I got Chris Paul's Topps Chrome Refractor Rookie that most of us are familiar with in the hobby and that I've owned several copies of and since sold and done pretty well by time in the market when they made that run and went to the finals. Um, I've got them ranked where they are. Uh, like I said, two great players. Chris Paul's a little bit on the downside. If this was prime Chris Paul, obviously they'd be ranked a lot higher. But like I said, I just haven't seen the same Chris Paul that we saw two years ago when he had that, you know, preposterous bounce back season where he was even mentioned in uh, you know MVP conversations, albeit I don't think it was well supported, but he was mentioned in uh, MVP conversations a couple years ago when they made that run that they made. Uh, so Booker and Chris Paul are here. Uh, an argument can be made that DeAndre Ayton belongs here. No argument can be made that Michael Bridges belongs here, even though he is a, a very elite defender. I don't think he's quite in that same category as Paul and Ayton, but that's just my opinion. Uh, nevertheless, that's where I've got them ranked. And uh, that was number seven. Number six on our list, I got Zion and Ingram. Uh, and again, what's ironic is, you know, I'm filming this on October 24th. I'm going down to the Mavericks game tomorrow. Last night, Zion and Ingram both get hurt in the same game. And the Pelicans were on fire. They looked really good. They finished overtime. Ingram had some type of concussion, so I think he's in the concussion protocol. Probably not going to get to see him tonight. Zion had some kind of bad fall. I don't know. I think he's questionable for tonight. Uh, I'm assuming both these guys are going to be healthy in, you know, either tomorrow or three to five days. And so I've got them ranked where I do because they are explosive. And of course, an argument can be made about Valanchunas and McCollum, but I think Ingram and Zion are the clear cut alpha and beta for this Pelicans team. And they seem to be putting it together. Now, this is a team that's doing things with not just having two elite players like Zion and Ingram, but also having incredible depth. I mean, when your third, fourth, and fifth best players are Herb Jones, CJ McCollum, and J uh, Jonas Valanchunas, you're doing things right. And then they're bench is filthy man I mean Trey Murphy is a very serviceable rotation wing 3 and D guy and then you've got uh, Jackson Hayes who's still working back from an injury uh, but more importantly you got Alvarado coming off the bench um, you know, you got Herb Jones as your three and D starter, who's an elite, you know, all NBA caliber defender. Uh, I've got those Pelicans duo ranked at number six. Now we're on to our top five. So the top third in the West. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, are going to be surprised, but this is the order that I've got them in. Uh, I've got Doncic and Christian Wood. And this is coming from somebody who really, really, really uh, thinks Christian Wood is overrated. But Doncic is so damn good that I had to have him in my top five. Even if his second player was Spencer Dinwiddie, I probably would have had him in the same spot. I think Christian Wood's probably the second best player on the team in front of Dinwiddie. Uh, but let's see if he defers. I, I saw some glimpses of the old black hole Christian Wood that used to pay, play for the uh, Houston Rockets where he thought he was a point guard. Then he thought he was Carl Anthony Towns. And he likes to stroke threes. He can't make free throws. 
Um, I think he's probably an overrated defender uh, because he looks the part but can't play it. Uh, enough disparaging comments about Christian Wood. Uh, Doncic is the reason that I've got the Dallas Mavericks ranked as my fifth best duo. Uh, and you can see I decided to put a little less uh, popular Doncic rookie card on here. It's 2018 Panini status card number 122, PSA 10. Uh, just a base paper card, just a product that I really like. I think a lot of thought was put into it, and I like the aesthetics of that status product. And then uh, Christian Woods, Don Russ, uh, you know, it's actually an autograph card that's in-person autograph, PSA 10. I threw that on there as well. Good luck finding a bunch of Christian Wood cards uh, that have been graded because nobody really collects the guy. Uh, number four on the list. This is where it really gets to nut cutting time. This is not easy. So uh, let me know in the comments below where you think I went astray. But I've got Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards. Theoretically, I could have put Gobert in there instead of either Towns or Edwards. Uh, and that's kind of the talk of the town with Minnesota is who's who, right? Whose team is it? Who emerges as the alpha? Who emerges as the beta? Who takes a step back? We know D'Angelo Russell's a clear cut fourth. Uh, as far as how important he is to the team. I'll be honest with you, my guy Jaden McDaniels has looked fantastic in playing his role. Uh, almost like a poor man Scottie Pippen, you know, Horace Grant combination, playing that wing 3 and D position, just very versatile. He steals the ball, he blocks, he makes open threes. He's a decent little free throw shooter. He handles it enough to help out here and there. And he makes pretty decent decisions and he knows his role. So he's almost like the Herb Jones of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, and so I've got Carl Anthony Towns and Edwards as the two that I chose for my beta and my alpha, but I wouldn't argue with you if you wanted to put Gobert in there. Uh, I've got them ranked fourth, man. Um, this is just a nasty combination. I really expect Anthony Edwards to take a massive step forward uh, this season, as long as Chris Finch and Carl Anthony Towns allow him to do so. Uh, I do think he is better served to stop relying so much on the three-point shot and really try to get his big, broad shoulders and giant hips up in into the rim and attack the rim. Uh, almost in Michael Jordan-like fashion. He's just got a tremendous physical, strong NBA body. We've seen how explosive he is. We've seen him take contact and finish. Uh, I, I really think if he played with more of kind of a, a John Morant, Russell Westbrook mentality of I'm getting to the rim until you stop me, I think he would be better served. And then he could rely uh, you know, on his three-point shot almost as a counter move. But uh, putting the pressure on the defense is going to be the key for Anthony Edwards' development. And, uh, and I like them at the number four spot. That's a tough team, man, and a team that everybody's going to want to watch. Uh, we're curious to see where Minnesota finishes this year. Number three on my list. This is tough, right? Uh, and people are going to probably flame me. I think Jordan Poole is a better player than Klay Thompson right now. I do. He's certainly a better player than Draymond Green, who looks like a shell of himself. I've watched three games now. I've actually had to put Draymond on my fantasy team, and it's not uh, it's not fun to watch him play and just dribble handoff and then set illegal screens. Uh, but I got Steph Curry's Refractor Rookie PSA 10 and then Jordan Poole's Blue Green Yellow Prism Rookie Card PSA 10 from uh, from Prism Choice. Uh, I chose Jordan Poole over Clay just because he's younger. Uh, they had very similar numbers last year, believe it or not. But, um, you know, Poole led the NBA in free throw percentage. I expect Poole to be a little bit better this year, whereas Clay Thompson's a year older. Uh, so there's, they're just two players heading in two different directions. I realize that Poole comes off the bench. Um, but honestly, uh, you know, at this point, if you made me choose one of these two players as to which one I would want on my team in the NBA, I would choose Jordan Poole by a very, very slim hair right now. Um, you know, Steph is obviously still one of the 10 best players in the world, maybe one of the five best players in the world, depending on your posture and opinion on the defensive side of the ball and how much it matters. Uh, so just Steph alone, almost like Doncic with Christian Wood, Steph alone is enough uh, to give the Warriors a top three team in the West. And this is where we've got some decisions to make. Uh, and it was not easy. But number two on our list <laughs> is, uh, and remember, we're not picking the best teams, we're picking the best duos. I got Jokic and Murray. Uh, Jokic is a two-time MVP, so you can't argue with that. 
Um, his credentials uh, tell me that he's the best player in the Western Conference because he's won the MVP two years in a row. Um, I've got his beautiful, beautiful uh, color match, light blue prism PSA 10 on the screen. And then I've got Jamal Murray's Optic Hollow rookie card PSA 10 on the screen as well. Uh, really good looking picture in that Jamal Murray Optic Hollow. Um, Jamal Murray's not quite back yet. An argument can be made. Michael Porter Jr. belongs here. I don't think Aaron Gordon's really in that conversation, but I think most people, when they think of Denver, they think of a big three with Porter Jr., Murray, and Jokic. Um, Murray looks to be almost all the way back. I know there was some concern about him coming back and whether he's going to be ready. Uh, I, he doesn't look 100%, but I don't think it's going to take him long to ramp up. Jokic is just so damn good. Uh, you know, I would probably say that at this moment, based on Murray's physical condition, Jordan Poole's probably a little bit better player than Jamal Murray as of right now. Just, just purely based on, you know, if we compare Bubble Murray versus Jordan Poole right now, it give me Murray all day long. But that, I don't know if that's the Murray that we've got right now on this Denver Nuggets roster. But Jokic is so damn good that I've got them ranked number two. And it was a close number two. I almost had them number one. One. These top three could have gone in any particular order, um, but uh, I chose to put the Denver Nuggets at number two. And again, remember, this is not ranking teams, so don't shoot me when you see who number one is. But I'm sure if you watch basketball, you know who it is. And trust me, nobody uh, wanted not to put this team number one more than me, but uh, it can't be denied. I mean, the two, uh, the best duo in the West is LeBron James and Anthony Davis, albeit they have nothing to show for it this season because the Lakers are 0-3 and they look like a disaster. Uh, but if it was a game of two-on-two, two, they might be, you know, 82-0. and 0. But it's not. Uh, but that's not what we're here for. We're ranking the best duos, not one through five, one through two. And so I've got LeBron James upper deck, uh, you know, extra rookie card, his redemption special, sort of an insert rookie card that I really like. It's got a lenticular surface, um, really cool looking card. If you haven't had a chance to check one of these out, go check it out. It's a cool looking card. Uh, I do own a couple copies, so I'm not trying to <laughs> pump and dump a few hundred dollar card, but it's just the one that I chose because I think it looks the coolest. Uh, and it has got that lenticular surface, like the old hot numbers uh, from the 1990s and like the sports flicks baseball cards from the uh, 80s, believe it or not. And then uh, just to the right, you've got Anthony Davis in his uh, 2013 Prism um, PSA 10. I didn't pull his rookie card, but I pulled his 2013 Prism because that's my favorite year of Prism. And it's a clean looking copy here. So I've got LeBron and AD number one. AD does look really good thus far in the season. I do realize he could break a fingernail and be out for six weeks at some point. Uh, I know LeBron is aging and I know he doesn't look like the same LeBron, but the dude just is putting up numbers upon numbers over and over, night after night. And uh, for that reason, I've still got LeBron and AD ranked here, number one on my list of the best Western Conference duos as of today, October 24th, 2022. Let me know, where did I get it wrong? Where did I get it right? Not just who should be number one, but you need to tell me why you think they should be number one or number two or number three. Did I get it wrong with the Jazz? Did I get it wrong with Gideon SGA? Go back through the list and let me know what you would change if you were making your own list. Uh, part of the reason I make these videos is to get engagement and to entertain you guys. Uh, I did put some thought into it, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the little flair of adding some of their uh, really cool cards in the slides as well. Um, but as always, I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate you watching. Uh, I'm going to do the 15 best duos in the East next. And so you will see these two videos in short succession, back-to-back -back days. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Keep collecting, stay positive in the hobby, and peace.